Hi, this is Russell Stanner from teachertrainingvideos.com. Today we're going to look at one of my favorite technologies. I'm going to show you some lovely ideas about how this technology can be used. We're going to look at Snagit, we're going to look at screen capture, and we're going to look at a complete training from the beginning. So this is a beginner's guide to using Snagit. If you watch these videos through to the end, you're going to learn how to do screen capture. You're going to get some great ideas, and I'm going to show you how we can also use Snagit for image capture. Really hope you like the video. If you do, please like it, please share it, please comment on it. As always, let's get started. So once you've downloaded Snagit 2019 onto your computer, and if you've got 2018, these videos will also be totally relevant because there was only a few updates uh, between 2018 and 2019. In your programs, go over and what you're looking for is to open up from TechSmith you want snag it and the best thing is to open up the editor first the editor and recorder are kind of two separate things the editor is where you can edit and organize your recordings and your image capture and the capture button of course is this button here that you click on uh, that will allow you to screen capture and we're going to start straight away with screen capture so remember this is your edit window and we'll be coming back and looking at this but to actually do a recording and the most important thing to get us starting is to click on this button here and we're going to capture something now what I'm going to do for the first example is I'm going to capture uh, a PowerPoint presentation and show you how you would do that so this is Snagit on the screen, and if I was going to do a PowerPoint recording, I wouldn't need to record full screen. There's really no need to do that because when you do a recording, uh, when you open it up afterwards as a video, you'll see it will be nice and big in size and quality because there are so many pixels on a screen these days that even when you blow up uh, a video, as long as you don't do it too much, it's still going to look really good. So you come on to Snagit click on video we're not going to have the webcam on I will come back to that make sure your microphone's on you do want to have as well record systems audio that means it will record any sounds that your computer plays as well as of course of your actual uh, voice you definitely want to be able to record the cursor so put that on and you definitely want to make sure that you preview that is once you've done the recording it plays back so those are the settings that you need uh, to basically work and just one little thing here let me close that sorry is here is to click on on and just make sure that you've chosen the correct uh, microphone so what I'm going to do for this example is I'm actually going to use a different microphone to the one that I'm using uh, to do this recording so I've got kind of two microphones set up so I'm going to choose to use the microphone that's on my webcam and that's it now when I want to actually start to do my recording, all I need to do now is to mark the area on the screen. Now, just while I'm doing this recording, I'm going to turn my own webcam off, and you'll see why in a minute, because I'm actually going to show you how the webcam works in Snagit. So first of all, then, let's just do a basic recording. So click on the Snagit, on, on the capture button, hold your mouse down, and mark the area that you want to record. And notice, I don't need to go full screen. The quality of the image is so good these days. There's so many pixels that I really don't need to go full screen. Just going to do that down a little bit. And notice also, it means that the controls are on the screen here. And this is really handy you'll see in a minute the benefits of this so I'm going to click on this button now to start and you'll see how I do a recording good morning ladies and gentlemen and today I'm going to talk about the two courses that I run on the flip classroom in collaboration with Nile Norwich Institute for language education and teachertrainingvideos.com see I click on the, the pause button now and now I can jump to the first slide and then carry on my recording first of all just to give you a little bit of background to my own experience in the flip classroom and I began to do some exercises with the flip classroom back in 2006 2007 before I'd even heard of the name and it was actually an organization in America that had read about my work and invited me out and I met uh, many of the early people that were working on the flip classroom idea okay so I can then carry on like this so once I've done my recording and if I want to now click on another page okay and then I could continue just one the uh, screen capture or the flip classroom is really based on the work of uh, blooms blah 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 I won't do any more just gonna pause that but now I'm gonna stop it so I've done my recording and that recording is instantly playable 
so I can now play that recording back. Good morning ladies and gentlemen and today I'm going to talk about the two courses that I run on the Flip Classroom in collaboration with Nile Norwich Institute for Language Education and TeacherTrainingVideos.com. First of all just so simple now all I would need to do now is click on save as and I can save that video onto my computer so I'm going to call this one test snag it sorry snag it video okay and that video is now ready I can then share that on uh, for example on Moodle or share that on um, on Edmodo or share it on Blackboard or email it to my students or etc. Now there are actually lots of other ways of distributing the video and I'm going to show you those in a minute. Let's just have a quick look at that video. So if I now just minimize the screen of my computer and I'm going to delete the PowerPoint slide, we won't be using it anymore, then I will find that here is my video. Okay, it's actually on my other screen. I've got two computer screens here, but here it is. And if I click on it, it will open up nice Good and morning, big. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And today I'm going to talk about the two courses that I run. And that video is now mine. So you can see how easy it is to make a video. Now I'm going to come back now and show you how you could add a webcam to your video, which often people want to do. So what I'm going to do for this second one is open up some images I've got here of, in fact, we'll just work with a picture of Henry VIII. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to open up Snagit. So I'm going to open up the recorder again. I'm going to turn the webcam, this time I'm actually, instead of, I'm going to turn it on. So I'm connected to my webcam and I'm happy with that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on capture. I'm going to do the same thing as I did here. But now you'll notice I come on the screen first. Now, in this particular case, because of the size of the image of Henry VIII, when we do the webcam, you'll notice that there's this kind of black area around it. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. It's really just to do with the screen size and the size of your webcam. But now what I could do is click on this button and kind of record myself doing an introduction before I then went into the lecture about Henry VIII. So let me give an example. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about Henry VIII, one of the most perhaps significant uh, historically kings in the history of the United Kingdom. Um, and what we're going to do is talk, though, not so much about his life uh, regarding his six wives, but more about his impact on the society that we live in today, particularly looking at how he made the decision to uh, break with the Catholic Church and create the Church of England here in the UK. So then I click on the pause button and now what I could do then is just click on this button here and jump over to Henry VIII. See I can jump between webcam or screen capture. Webcam, screen capture. And that's absolutely fantastic. Now I could carry on. So I would click, click on this button here let me just give you a little bit of background to Henry VIII and let's just talk a little bit about his uh, religious convictions. Originally, Henry VIII was in fact very, very Catholic and had uh, very strong associations with the Catholic Church, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I'm not gonna carry on any longer. I click on the stop button, okay, by clicking here and that video is immediately ready as we know. It starts with me in a webcam Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about Henry VIII, one of the most perhaps significant uh, historically. And then afterwards, if I carry on, it's going to come into the actual video. Now, one little thing about when you're working on the editor here, you can cut bits out. So let's imagine, for example, that the last bit of the video I wasn't happy with, all right? Very strong associations with the Catholic Church, blah, 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 blah. All right, so that blah, blah, blah. All right, so I'm going to cut that out. And so. had uh, very strong associations with the Catholic Church. All right, so I'm going to stop there. I'm going to just mark that to the end. Notice now it says cut, and I'm going to cut that blah, blah, blah bit out. So you can actually edit. Okay, I can put the webcam back on now because I'm not using the webcam within Snagit. I'm using it uh, to do this recording. So where I want to, what I want to talk about now is a little bit about sharing the video. So obviously we've already seen that we can click on file and we can click on save as, and then we can just save the video onto our computer and share it. But actually we could do lots of other things with that video. We could, for example, share it onto our Google Drive. If we have a Google account, then we are able to save our videos into our Google Drive. And in fact, I do that quite a lot. And the same with YouTube. 
Now, I'm just going to show you an example with YouTube because it's quite interesting. So if I just click on my account and I'm just going to show that I'm actually at the moment I'm signed out. So I'm just going to click here. So I'm just going to show you the exact process. OK, so if I wanted to share onto YouTube and I was uh, just coming on for the first time, the first thing I would need to do is click on account and then sign in. And in my case, uh, it's going to say to me, well, which of your accounts do you want to use? And I'm going to actually click on use another account. I've got a few other ones and I'm just going to click on teacher training videos uh, at googlemail.com. And I simply put in the name of the uh, email address of my Google email address. And then I simply put in the password and then click on next. And so now that connects my uh, Snagit to my YouTube channel. And incredibly now I can upload a video directly. So I'm just going to close that down and just show you how easy it is to now do this. Once you've connected your channel, it will always be connected as well. You don't have to reconnect. So if I now click here and say send to YouTube, OK, it's literally going to open up and I'm just going to write test video. Uh, let's just put test video snag it TTV. You always have to put a quick description. So I'm just going to copy that description and then I'm going to write here TTV. Now as the settings, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to say URL. In other words, when, when the video is uploaded, immediately snag it or in fact YouTube is going to send me back the link to where I can find that video on YouTube okay but I'm also going to send the video set the video as unlisted and that means that nobody can find that video unless they've got the link you won't be able to search for it on YouTube or um, you know it won't actually be in any of their lists if you do a search so those two things are really useful I'm going to click on upload and immediately that video starts to upload. You can see it here happening on the right hand side. It shouldn't take too long. Now the incredible thing is once the video is uploaded uh, and it will kind of warn you in the corner that your video has been uploaded, what happens is your computer automatically saves the link as, as if you've copied and pasted it. Yeah. So what I mean by that, you don't actually need to do anything. The video is already uploaded. And if I was to up, open up a, uh, for example, if I was to open up um, Google Chrome or Internet Explorer, let's do it with Internet Explorer. I'm just going to click on Internet Explorer and open it up onto the screen. Remember, the address to that video has just literally been saved as if I was copy and paste. You know, when you copy something, you click on something to copy it. Well, as soon as you upload a video into YouTube, the link is sent back and copied into your clipboard. So watch this. If I press Control V and press Enter, I'm going to go straight to that video. There it is. Just going to take a few Good seconds. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about Henry VIII, one of the most so there it is. I've done a lecture on Henry VIII, which I've now put up online in my particular case. I'm going to talk you through some of the things that I've done with Snagit now. Uh, I literally use it all the time. As I said at the beginning, it is my favorite technology. And then I'm going to, at the end, I'm going to show you one really special bonus thing. And that is how you can use screen or Snagit for image capture as well as for video capture. As long ago as 2005, I wrote an article where I just suggested that screen capture could be used to give feedback to students on their work. And this particular article was published in the Modern English Teacher. And the idea is simple. If a student sends me their work, I can open it on my screen. I can mark the points I want to make, turn on the screen capture, record myself going through their work and then sending them a video. So they're not only going to hear me talking, but they're also going to see as I talk through their screen. Now, this idea generated a lot of publicity for me. I wrote that article in 2005. I ended up winning a few awards and it ended up that I had an article in the Times higher uh, at the beginning of 2006. And then things really took after that, took off after that. Let me show you this uh, actual idea. So I'm just going to come over here and we're going to open up screen capture. I've got a piece of students work here. Let's imagine that I've already read the work and I've marked some of the things that I want to talk about. OK, so in theory, what I could do now is simply mark out this, the area of the screen, record myself and then send that video to the students. So all I need to do is open up uh, the screen capture, make sure it's on video click on capture. I'm going to mark the area 
where I want to give my feedback. I don't have to go full screen. You'll see why in a minute. I don't need the webcam. I'm just going to turn that off. Now I'm going to start doing the recording. Hi Tom, just want to give you some feedback on the work you sent me the other day. Um, first thing I just want to point out here is blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I could give my feedback. Uh, Tom, I just want to point out also down here, I'm not happy about this, blah, 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 blah. And you might really want to consider what you're saying here, blah, 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 blah. And then also here, something else, I really don't agree with this, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and I can do the recording and then I can click on stop. Now that video is immediately ready. Hi Tom, just want to give you some feedback on the work you sent me the other day. Um, now this idea has really taken off. There's been lots of uh, articles written about it by people who are much better at this uh, doing research than I am. I've also managed to publish a few articles and a couple of book chapters. I really do think this idea has got lots of potential. It's one of the reasons why I really do recommend having screen capture technology and why I particularly like Snagit because it seems very reliable. I'm going to finish with one little bonus thing now that you might not know about Snagit. Now, you may not realize this, but also Snagit is a brilliant image capture tool. In fact, originally it was an image capture tool, and I'm going to give you a really super simple idea. I've used this idea many times, but it really does highlight the power of Snagit. I'm going to search for images uh, of computers. I'm going to click on images. I'm going to make sure I do this legally. So I'm going to click on tools and I'm going to set it to an image that is labeled for non-commercial non reuse with modification. So I can use any of these pictures of uh, computers. I'm going to use this one here. This will do absolutely fine. Um, yeah, let's click on that one. And then what I'm going to do now is image capture that. So I'm going to open up Snagit, but I'm not doing video capture now. I'm going to do image capture. And I'll just simply click do it at this size. It will do fine for this quick example. I'm just going to mark that area. And that's now going to open up in the edit window. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of turn this into a worksheet. And to do that, first of all, I need to number some different objects on the screen. So I'm going to click up here and I'm going to click on a button called steps. Okay. And I'm going to do red ones. And now I'm going to start and I'm going to say, right, that would be screen. That would be mouse. That would be mat. That would be computer. That would be cable. That would be stand. And that would be keyboard. So I've got here a total of seven different things and I'm not even going to save that image for now I'm simply going to click on copy all and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste that immediately into a word document so I've got a word document open on the screen and if I now click on it and click paste that image goes straight into the word document and now what I could do down here underneath just going to come underneath the document I'm going to say complete the correct word and then I'm going to say number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. And I've literally created uh, an exercise in no time at all. So Snagit is a great image capture tool as well as a video capture tool, or screen capture tool. I use both aspects of Snagit a lot. I really am a big fan of Snagit. I really Okay, I really hope that was a useful video. If it was, please like it. Please share it with other teachers. Please comment on it. If you've got any questions about Snagit, then I'll do my best to answer them. I really do know the technology very well and I continually use it. If you're looking for more free videos, come to teachertrainingvideos.com, lots of videos. And there's a special Snag, Snagit section. And look out sometimes because I have occasionally have some great offers on actually being able to buy Snagit as well as get an online course from me. Um, so please come on to look at all the different technologies. If you want to keep up with my work, there's really two things you can do. Sign up to the newsletter. That way you'll keep up with all the latest articles and webinars and short courses and videos that I've created, um, perhaps where I'm talking around the world. And the other thing you can do, if you really want to keep up with all the backdated material, and there really is masses of it, then please sign up and or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to click on the bell. You'll get uh, updates then when there are new videos. Now, if you would like me to do a presentation or a workshop or work with you online, because I have access to an online virtual classroom, which is fantastic for computer training, then please just contact me here 
and um, I'll see if I can uh, help you out. And thank you very much.